Association of Journalists and Presidential Media Cocktail. On Wednesday, 5th December 2018, when we held the first annual media cocktail, I know many of you would have asked whether this event was going to continue every year. This evening, we're here for the fourth media cocktail. And each year, your greets and glamour leaves a special memory with us. For His Excellency the President, this cocktail has become a media ritual that must be performed every year. This is because it does not only to review some of your newspaper headlines, highlight government programs for the media, and say thank you to all of you for your contribution to national development, either as supporters or critics. On a lighter note, and for some, this cocktail has also provided an opportunity to book appointments directly with HE President without going through the staging of protocol of personal assistance. I invite a guest. This cocktail continues to symbolize the President's ardent belief that without a free and independent media, true democracy is unattainable. Sometimes we also recognize, as Jimmy Edward said, that the task of the media in a democracy is not to ease the path of those who govern, but to make life difficult for them by constant vigilance as to how they exercise the power they hold on behalf of the people who are entrusted to them. At the presidency, we do not force truth and accuracy. We know journalists cannot always guarantee truth, formally or informally, on behalf of special interests whether political or corporate. Third, we also demand fairness and impartiality. While there is no obligation to present every side in every piece and confidence. Fourth, we also demand humanity. But for all of us, it is a special privilege to serve. Therefore, I want to recognize and appreciate members of the media team and the presidency for the selfless and dedication that they have offered to the presidency. The following members may now come forward. Mr. Tanu Jalo, Communications Manager. Can you give a round of applause, please? Mr. Suleiman Stevens, Head of Audiovisual. Mrs. Awa Monsieur, Senior Official Correspondent. Mr. Lamin Sharif. Precious Emmanuel Smith. Yeni Gombu. Wani Sawane. Muktal T. Kamara, Emmanuel Bassa, Patrick Sama, Paul Saidu, Boka Idawa, Ibrahim Kabo, Sarah Kale, Elizabeth Senge, Joseph Magai, George Sise, Abdul Karim Fonti Kabea, Mohamed Mosie, Musa John Chuan. Your Excellency, these are members of the State House Communications Unit, Office of the First Lady, Office of the Vice President, and State House Strategic Communications. Your Excellency, we had a challenge in the office that this evening we wanted to surprise you with our own glitz and glamour, which is why we chose to be in suits and our ladies in blue. Can you give a round of applause, please? I also want to recognize my elder brother and colleague, the head of the Strategic Communications and Master of Ceremony for this evening, Dr. Peter Owana, for your mutual guidance and support. We also want to thank the Silo Commercial Bank, Local Commercial Bank, National Revenue Authority, and Mr. Babadiko Kamara for your support in this year's presidential cocktail. Once again, Your Excellency, we want to welcome all of you members of the Fourth Estate to this presidential media cocktail, and we hope you will have a memorable night. We wish you all a wonderful holiday ahead and the present 2022 in advance. We thank you very much. Thank you very much, the youngest. Be ever funny, be ever amazing. Uh, the best president ever for slides. The Honorable Ahmed Daswella.
Et on a quoi non On dit ça plus sinon. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Serbia, the Honorable Vice President of the Republic of Serbia, the First Lady of the Republic of Serbia, the Chief Minister, the Minister of Information and Communications and other ministers in the House tonight. the chairperson of the Independent Media Commission, the chairperson of the Right to Access Information and Communication, the presidential advisor, Madam Kona, in the house, the national coordinator of the Media Reform Coordinating Group, the past president of Sludge in the house, the regional executive of Sludge, who have traveled all the way from the north, east, and south to be here with us, the chairperson uh, for the north, Sir James Banga, for the south, Richard Gavau, and the deputy chair from the east, Ike Musa, in the house. The head of Slena, Madam Yema Thompson, station managers and editors present in the house, our senior colleagues in Virgil, the only paramount chief journalist in town, PC Kande Momo Samba Suleiman. The foray one of Brahmaya Chiefdom in the Cambia district, the Paramount Chief, journalist who is putting up a radio station in his chiefdom. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Your yes. Excellency, let me start by thanking you for this initiative of um, hosting um, annual media cocktail um, since you came into office in 2018 this is three years running it is a honor and demonstration from the fact that you actually recognize the role of the media and the respect that the role will play and you know that we are very important in the running of the state and in the promotion of our democracy we want to appreciate you for that your Excellency, please permit me to ask everyone present here who has not yet been counted. Let me see your hands, please. You have to be counted. If the census people are here, I encourage you to please go around and do the counting whilst we continue with the program. I believe as citizens, we should all stand up and be counted. If the government wants to count us 10 times in the year, let them count. I don't think there is any harm in that. I don't think there is any trouble in that. Maybe the government is planning to do some gift distribution to every household during this Christmas. So if you refuse to be counted, then you will lose out and you will have yourself to blame. So please stand up and be counted. Your Excellency, since the repeal of the criminal libel law, 
Zaj has become very attractive, especially for women. Earlier today, this morning, we inducted new members into Zaj from the western urban and rural regions. After a membership drive of over 200 applicants, the highest ever intake in the association's 50 years in existence. Of this total, women constitute 40%, the highest ever we have had in membership drive in the sludge. All of this thanks to your policy of free media. This year, we are appreciate you that uh, you signed uh, the Global Media Freedom Coalition Agreement, uh, making sure you become the fifth member in Africa to do so. That is a clear demonstration of your commitment to ensure that the media is free and um, promote freedom of expression and of the press. We want to thank you for that. All of this, like I said, is thanks to your policy of free media. It is clear now that women can freely practice their profession. And I expect now we will begin to see more women taking leadership positions in the media industry. The Excellency, the arrest of journalists in relation to their work has also substantially reduced since the repeal of the criminal labor law. In this light, we have signed an MOU with the security sector to see how we can improve our relationship with especially, with especially the security police so that the working environment will be more conducive for us. However, and regrettably, the latest incident of cyberbully of our dear sister and colleague, Mrs. Asma James, by one of our popular musicians, and the physical attack and detention of an AYD staff by the civilian police will cloud all of these games. And this is the huge challenge we will continue to face, especially in the digital space. These are the imperfections of life. When you plan for good, others plan for bad. However, we hope that the new year will bring some improvement. Your Excellency, may I take this opportunity to remind you of your outstanding manifesto promises to the media. For the annual subvention to sludge, this year's allocation has been surprisingly delayed as we are yet to receive for 2021. For the land for Sludge Secretariat, when it comes to Lucky Deeps, I don't think I will stand a chance. I've heard my colleagues and some people say I'm probably the luckiest president of Sludge, but I don't think I will want to put that to the test through a lucky deed to acquire land that the Excellency promised us. So if the Excellency will consider our follow-up request for Sludge to acquire the Daily Mail building at Rodney Street, that will be the best gift of the year to the media. In addition, I want to draw your attention to um, a building project in the eastern province, the Sludge Eastern Region which is now almost about 40% complete. And we want to appreciate those who have contributed um, to that um, building project. Uh, Chief Soiree of the, the NPPA, and also our own very own Sheikh Kawo, uh, the, the board chairman for the SNR estate. We want to congratulate you and thank you. And hope that other members from the Eastern Province will also come on board to help us finish that building. It doesn't matter if they have their building first than the national and the secretariat here. For the investment conference, Your Excellency, we have worked with the Ministry 
of Information and Communications, the indefatigable Minister Mohamed Rahman Swari and his team throughout the year so that, that we put a program together. But there are still outstanding issues that we are trying to sort out. We will continue to work with the MIC to deliver on this promise by mid next year. And we anticipate the conference whose outcomes will change the face of the civilian media forever. In this vein, Your Excellency, we are happy that we have just launched a sports development fund and committed 10 billion units from the state towards that fund. May I take this opportunity, sir, to inform you that Sludge, under my leadership, we launched the Golden Jubilee Journalism Welfare Fund by mid-January 2022 to cater for the welfare of journalists in times of emergency and to promote independent journalism in Sierra Leone. Several corporate bodies, including Orange Sierra Leone, Mercury International, and Rokel Commercial Bank, have consented to contribute to the seed fund, part of which will be invested in Biera bonds. So it will yield dividends periodically. We hope other well-meaning organizations will come on board in time for the launching. And I believe the state and your excellency will not want to be left out from this initiative to support independent journalism in several years. Now, Your Excellency, there are other promises that you made in your manifesto, but we, are, we understand the state can only do some because of limited resources. So we understand the times and we will not be Bolivar Twist. Your Excellency, as I conclude, here is a recap of some of the topical, controversial highlights of the year. Not necessarily in order of sequence, which kept the media and the citizens excited throughout the year. The April 19 parliamentary clash in relation to the tabling of the midterm census instrument, which saw MPs throwing punches, doing mixed martial arts, police spraying gas, and a very senior citizen breaking his fast. The appointment of the next commissioner for the Western area. The final rerun member of parliament elections for constituency 110, which the SLPB lost. The black Johnson fish arbor, which we expect to produce platinum fish in the near future. The COP26 Glasgow Climate Change Summit and the untimely public notice from Leadway for the exportation of our timber. Those that are practicing Mungu politics in my party to the idiots who want to interrupt while I'm speaking. <laughs> the Kwanadugu by election and those conflicts in Tibet. The $68 million the bank governor used to bribe four others of the Leon to bring back the national currency to the banks, but which is the only bribery that is not a corruption. <laughs> the SLPP women's leader elections, we talk them, we do them. <laughs> and the indefinite suspension of the Auditor General and our deputy. And the last, but not the least, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues in the media, I will continue to fly. Thank you very much. At this point, I would like to invite Mr. George Kolema, the Commissioner Independent Media Commission. That's the venerable George Kolema. A big round of applause, please, for the man who uh, controls the media in Sierra Leone. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was sitting three minutes oh, according to the first session. So I prepare my speech for three minutes. It's okay. 
Thank you very much. My Excellency, President, you look mad at you. Honorable Vice President, Dr. Judy Girl, First Lady of Australia, Madam Fatima Bill, Chief Minister, Honorable J.J. Safa, Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Ramasari, my dear colleague friend, Vice President, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Once again, we are gathered here tonight to celebrate another year of sustained press freedom under the new director agenda of your government, Your Excellency President Ibn Rajah Bill. Media practitioners have continued to train their professors in an environment poised for future hopes and aspirations for all and sundry in the profession. This new day in the media landscape of Sierra Leone, done in 2020, when you, Mr. President, signed into law the new IFC Act 2020 and the repeal 1965 Public Order Act that have for 50 years criminalized murder. President before you and the public generally have settled on the premise that we will appeal for the 1965 Public Order Act, having an act in polite, as a result of reckless government. Nothing of sort has happened. Anyway, Mr. President. I agree that there are some strange and unconventional sort of style of journalism and journalism in the country. Government and the country can still find pride in a number of other journalists that represent the true cause of the profession. Mr. President, you have set a pace for press freedom in the country today that is good that something very, very extraordinary. For instance, while your counterpart, colleague presidents elsewhere are closing down media houses and getting journalists, sometimes even killing them, you are referred to journalists in the country as honorable men and women. And in return, and in return, the Psychological Association of Journalists has also honored you for your press freedom reforms, especially for the repeal of the Public Act 1965. Some of your houses have even gradually provoked the authorities to have them arrested. But to this day, no journalist is in jail. No journalist is in court, especially because of government suppression. Mr. President, you cannot do more to prove that you are champion of modern day press freedom in the country. What we at the Independent Media Commission have done to embellish your committed press freedom reforms, Mr. President, is to put some measures in place for the well-being of all practicing journalists in the country. So they need the how they pay their journalists the minimum wage of, of, of 600,000. They pay their workers' taxes as well as their national revenue authority taxes. These measures, among many others, are commissioned for the renewal of the yearly media licenses. More to be said next time when I'm giving more time. Mr. President, on behalf of IMNC, I wish your Excellency a Merry Christmas and a happy 2022. Thank you.
At this point, we're calling on the Minister, the Honourable Minister of uh, Information and Communications, Honourable Rado Soare, to give us a three minute statement. Your Excellency, the President, Honourable Vice President, Madam First Lady, Chief Minister, Chairman IMC, President of Sludge, colleague ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me to congratulate the State House Press Secretary, Yusuf Kaketawa Sandi, and his able team for successfully organizing this third edition of the Media Cocktail. There is no doubt that the Media Cocktail has become a proud tradition of this State House. It is now a hallmark of Your Excellency's Presidency. I am delighted to be here tonight to wine and, to wine and dine with my colleagues of the Fourth Estate. It is not often that media practitioners are in this light-hearted mood when they meet with those of us in government. It is not often that we get the opportunity to banter, but slap, laugh, and pour fun into the vagaries of life. Yet, as cheerful as we all are today, let us not gloss over a very pertinent media-related issue. And I would like to focus on the future of journalism as we know it today. It's, it's associated business model and the continuing relevance of the journalism profession to national development, especially in this age of the fourth industrial revolution. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have a very good backdrop for journalistic practice, which is that the media under President Julius Marabio has enjoyed more freedom, more engagement, more access to government information, and more support than under any other leader since independence. But, I've also said, and I'll repeat tonight, that with more freedom comes greater responsibility. And as the saying goes, to whom much is given, much is expected. The emphasis on media responsibility or accountability is not a contrivance of His Excellency's government. It is a clarion call that is anchored in the principle of ethical universalism. In other words, the truth is the truth. We cannot call it anything else. Conversely, what is a lie in Matutuka, Sierra Leone, is a lie in Managua, in Nicaragua. The acclaimed Nigerian storyteller, my new fan, uh, novelist, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, expounded on this universalist underpinnings of fact-based journalism some time ago. When she, cha she charged journalists to change the media, change it, make it about truth, not about entertainment, not about profit making, but about truth. She added, and while you are doing it, be asked about when you need balance and when you don't. Because sometimes seeking balance gets in the way of telling the truth. If you are reporting about the sun rising in the east, you do not need to hear the other side because there is no real other side. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, indeed, we do have several sun rising in the east narratives about President Bill's administration. I am talking about accomplishments that are cast in stone and whose positive impacts do not and should not lend themselves to any political or intellectual debate. Let me mention a few of those media-related achievements. Number one, President Bill repealed the criminal libel law because of his strong political will and conviction about the role of the media in national development. Number two, President Bill institutionalized the payment of subvention to sludge in fulfillment of a commitment enshrined in the manifesto he ran on for president. Number three, President Bill is the only president in living memory to calendarize a, memo, a media cocktail every year. This is the reason we are here tonight. In addition, he has personally visited radio and TV stations to be interviewed. Under President Bill, journalists are now paid salaries and making social security contributions. 
These contributions provide much needed security in old age or in the event of death. The country's rating has improved considerably on all global media freedom rankings. Number six, Sierra Leone has won global acclaim and has been admitted as the fifth African member of the Global Media Freedom Coalition, which serves as an inspiration to other African countries to imbibe the values of free press and free speech. I could go on and on and on till the cows come home. These are truth. There are no other side to them. I must acknowledge that slide rightly bestowed on President Bill, the champion of Media Freedom Award during the 15th anniversary celebrations earlier this year. I commend slide for that worthy recognition. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the media is at crossroads. Editors and other media owners now face a stark choice, innovate or die. Newspapers, radio, and television audiences continue to dwindle as people seek alternative sources of information. As you all know, anyone with a mobile phone is now a journalist. Sadly, the more outrageous the content shown out these days, the more engagement such content receive. Getting the eyes and ears of people is now a challenge as well as an opportunity. I would like to see the Sierra Leone media latch on to this opportunity using innovative approaches. I want to see you rise to this occasion, neutralize the peddlers of fake news, and provide for your audiences rich alternative platforms for accessing factual information. Your Excellency, last month we had the second annual media retreat in Bo, which brought together over 200 journalists and civil society leaders. That forum provided a unique opportunity for many journalists and civil society leaders, especially those in the provinces, to interact for the first time with some of my, my colleagues in government. At that retreat, we review the progress made by your administration in the last three and a half years in delivering on the commitments in the New Direction Manifesto. There was generous information sharing followed by robust debates on key development issues. I am pleased to report that by their very admission, the journalists and civil society leaders who participated in the retreat left both better informed about government activities more appreciative of the challenges that confront um, the country, and enthused by the ongoing progress in the country, and with hope rekindled of possibilities of our beloved country. Truth be told, since the Bowl retreat, we have witnessed an increased media coverage of the development strides of this administration. And to that, I say, long may it continue. Permit me. Your Excellency, to share with my colleagues in the media space here tonight, your recent directive that I hold such media engagements on a quarterly and rotational basis starting next year. I wish to assure Your Excellency, consider it done. Like other directives you have given me in the past, this one will be implemented without, with, with uncommon efficiency. In addition, Your Excellency, your very successful media police in Twitter last December last year triggered a relenting request by provincial journalists for a similar experience in their region. I lend my voice to those requests. With the Excellency's permission, I intend to coordinate to the State House Press Secretary for such presidential interaction during your future visits to the region. I believe that the opportunity to hear from the proverbial horse's mouth will democratize government formation further throughout the nook and cranny of Sarah. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate the extension of the frontiers of press freedom and the deepening of the culture of responsible free speech, it is with regret that I inform you of a few instances of partisan bickering impeding progress. For example, not long ago, a presentation of a cash prize award and media equipment to a group of student journalists at St. Francis Seminary School in Makeni, Northern Sierra Leone, was aborted because the award was dubbed President Julius Madabio Award for Media Excellence. It was, the, it was during the 63rd anniversary of the St. Francis Secondary School. You can imagine how disappointed the students felt. The left down experience by Abu Bakr our press attaché in Saudi Arabia, who donated the equipment and cash. That incident, Your Excellency, was painful 
in so far as other members are resolved as Sierra Leoneans to be on the same development bandwagon like other countries. The man after whom the award was named, President Julius Mandabu, is not president of a region, nor the chairman of a political party. He is the president of Sierra Leone. He is our leader. All of us, the fountain of honor, entrusted by Sierra Leoneans to pilot the affairs of our, to pilot the affairs of our country. I have a message for those who watch that event. Stop playing politics with the lives of especially the young people. Stop playing politics with the destiny of Sierra Leone. I challenge OPFA, the old Makeri Franciscan Association members here present, and Slide to investigate this matter and expose those behind this incident. Let me end by saying that I've enjoyed our partnership with the media. We sometimes disagree with being disagreed without being disagreeable. We appreciate each other's work and our collective sense of purpose. Because let's be frank, Sierra Leone is the only country we all call who can all truly call us. As we fight towards greatness, we have no choice but to work together hand in hand on our excellencies able leadership. I wish you all a happy Christmas and a prosperous new year. And please don't forget to register for the midterm census. Thank you. God bless. We are in trouble. We don't introduce the president. We invite His Excellency okay. to make the 2021 media keynote. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. His Excellency the President or the Republic of Sierra Leone. Vice President, Madam First Lady, Chief Minister, the Honorable Minister of Information and Communication, the Chairman Independent Media Commission, the President of the Israelian Association of Journalists, the Fourth Estate, the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Editor Lelea. Are the the Today I will start with a very short story about three men. One was an editor, photographer the there. Yes, we did, we did, we did. The other one has been photographer. Hey. And the other one has been reporter, journalist. These three were covering a media, a, a convention actually in Miami. And in Miami they have a very beautiful beach. They decided to go up and down the beach while the convention was going on. Halfway up the beach, they stumbled into a magician. And uh, this magician said to them, normally, when I see people, I, make, give, I let them fulfill three of their wishes. But since you are three, I will only fulfill one wish for each and every one of you. I had a photographer, Mago Mago. He said, I will be the first. I would like to spend the rest of my life. The wish when the photographer be great. He said, if you want to spend the rest of your life in a very beautiful, huge house, then you don't forget any money problem. Then the magician granted him his wish and sent him off to the Caribbean 
in a beautiful mansion with everything. He didn't have to worry about anything anymore. Then came the journalist, the reporter. Then the magician asked him, what do you want as a wish? Then he said he wants to live in a yacht, cruising the Mediterranean for the rest of his life and with no worries about money. The magician granted him his wish and sent him off to the Mediterranean. And of course, the last person who came was the editor. And the magician asked him, what do you want? The, the editor said, I want both the photographer and the reporter to come back here now. That is the only wish I have. This is why I ask for editors first. Very powerful people. The lesson is that if you are a photographer or a journalist, you should always make a wish when publication has gone to bed. Never you make a wish before then, because your editor can always call you back. <laughs> editor Unade, I'm not going to be not saying that's not powerful. Journalists, they not to rely on friends, they, they go give me certificate and say champion. The next day, they will come in and they paper. <laughs> My friends in the media, this evening we meet again to interact and strengthen our bond as partners in development, national development. Over the years, our friendship has grown from strength to strength. From the most vilified opposition presidential candidate prior to 2018 general election to a global champion of press freedom as Chino, uh, as, as, um, Chino Acheba once wrote in his book, Things Fall Apart, that the lizard that jumped from the high Iroko tree to the grand said he would praise himself if no one else did. I, I am tempted to do the same thing. In fact, in April this year, for the first time, for any city president, I visited radio and TV stations where I subjected myself to media scrutiny on my three years achievement and other governance issues. From SLBC TV with um, Salma Taba, Radio Democracy with Madam Asma James and my best friend Nebel Kaba, AYVTV with Antonia, ha Antonia Howard, Star TV with my friend Abdul Kamara, Abraman Kamara, to Justice FM with Kelvin Lamin Lando. We gave life to the meaning of Section 11 of the Constitution that provides for the obligation of the mass media to highlight the accountability of government to the people. I was confronted with many important questions on corruption, violence, challenges of education, yet there was also my friend on Radio Democracy, Good Morning Salon Program, who asked me, Waiting at your current relationship with, the, with your predecessor, the former president. He said, For what I said, Waiting at your relationship with your former president. <laughs> Suddenly, that became the highlight. You know, <laughs> um, just in case you have also forgotten, in April, I became the very first sitting president to participate in a presidential town hall organized by Syria Eye magazine. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in 2021, the media continues to be an integral part of the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. The role of the media in informing citizens on the vaccination exercise, the preventive measures, the importance of testing, and even the COVID-related restrictions have been essential to contain and mitigate coronavirus in Sierra Leone. Thank you very much for playing that role very well. But sometimes I'm crucified by the media even for doing what is right. And in July this year, with the detection of the Delta variant and an alarming third wave of uh, COVID-19, I announced the suspension of, congreg of congregational worship in churches, mosques, and other religious places for a period of one month in July 2021. Lo and behold, the night watch this paper publish a banner headline doubting beyond state in God. <laughs> Very interesting. The Apex newspaper had the front page. Do not record me anyhow. And the voice of Salon newspaper published Pres President Beers trampling on citizens' rights. Even the opposition NGC newspaper Salon Force was also not happy with the restrictions. And the newspaper, on the 8th of July 2021, front page published, vaccination process is unlawful. As a leader, I know new restrictions and enhanced measures to contain COVID-19 are top decisions to announce. But rest assured that I will always do what is in the best interest of the people of this country and fight COVID-19 as an enemy. Let me also use this opportunity to remind all of us that the first known case of COVID-19 Omicron variant has been discovered in Sierra Leone. Bad news. Tonight, I call on you again, the media, our media family, to continue in raising awareness on health and safety measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19, especially during this festive season. Unfortunately, the political gymnastics uh, by certain opposition parties around the 2021 midterm housing and population uh, census must have left the media a little bemused. Don't worry. That is what opposition polit politicians do to attract your attention as members of the media, I encourage you all to ensure that you are not only counted, but also use your various media platforms to monitor the census exercise to safeguard its credibility. As your president said once um, earlier on today, make sure you are counted. You know, why I'm never mad with journalists is because when I started my political career, I actually worked with journalists. I was Minister of Information. That is why I don't lose patience with you. I know you better than any other person. <laughs> so, uh, why do you have to say you get thick skin? Because I know the people I'm dealing with. Let me reiterate that the first digital census we give detailed information on the population and its dynamics, which we assist government in development planning, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Interestingly, some sections of the media have been quick to castigate government for not postponing the census because of the World Bank's withdrawal from fully cooperating with the final phase of the process. Ladies and gentlemen, we are an independent state. We seek assistance, but we will not stop our doing what is our obligation because another entity withdraws their support. We are an independent state. We will continue with the census. I'm pleased to know that the census is going on very well in spite of the initial challenges in the first two days. Members of the 4th Estate in 2021 
we witnessed the historic abolition of the death penalty as I gave presidential assent to the abolition of the death penalty act 2021. Syria made history by becoming the 110th country in the world to abolish the death penalty for all crimes. As usual, the newspaper publication, publications on the abolition of the death penalty we are interested in. For instance, Concord Times newspaper published the banner headline, Death Penalty is Dead and Buried. Political newspaper focused on our country with a front page headline, World Hills Saloon as Death Penalty Dies. Suddenly for the News 24 newspaper, I became an abolitionist with the banner headline, expunging death penalty, President Leo becomes abolitionist. Even with such great progress for our country, the cynics will always speak to Awareness Times, which published a banner headline. Cynics say, Mother Leo is protecting himself with abolition of death penalty. I still cannot understand. And just in case you forgot, that this was the manifesto, this was actually a manifesto promise. We are very, very, very deliberate. We are very, very intentional. Most of what we are doing, we have thought through, and that is why we are giving effect to them. Beyond the abolition of the death penalty, Media has also supported other legislative reforms. In August, the Awoke newspaper published on its front page Gender Empowerment Bill. President Bill leaves no development stone unturned. Indeed, we will not leave any development stone unturned. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen of the Fourth Estate, more than three years in governance, there is still media frenzy around my international travel. Um, and 2021 has not been any different. In October this year, the Nightwatch newspaper referred to me as Global Trotting President, and the News Age and the New Age newspaper described me as Wakabot View. <laughs> but don't worry, if I go for Wakabot, to make a phenom from the country at the Rwanda. And I make a tell when I say, I will continue for fly. <laughs> because of the workabouts, we don't do plenty of things there. It's not all gloomy as the naysayers want to believe, because we have rebranded our country, restored Sierra Leone's credibility, with donor partners and mobilize huge external resources as a result. Just in 2021 alone, my trip to Harvard University resulted in Sierra Leone benefiting from 24 million United States dollars that we established the very first site for deploying state-of-the-art digital design and fabrication process to give Sierra Leone access to quality link processes. I need to drill in deeper on this because this is going to be the state of the art bionic prosthesis. And what does it do? It is not in, even in the United States. It, it is going to be done by um, our friends at MIT, and it is going to be, Sri Lanka is going to be the best site. What does it do? If you lose a limb as a result of anything, accident, um, diabetes, or let's say for those who have lost their limbs as a result of the war, this prosthesis is done in such a way that it works with your brain. If it is a hand, it functions like, like your brain functions. When you want to pick something and you think about it, it actually extends the hand. It is going to be there in our Wakabot view in the Grand Canvas. $24 million. 
My trip to the Global Education Summit in London and meeting with the GP Executive Director, they be say na factual. They, they say I have not do an na factual meeting. Well, not everybody was invited. Not all heads of state were invited. But because of our impressive record with education in just three years, a few of us were invited. And as a result of that, children will be eligible for 40 million United States dollars, grants, not known, for education sector reform. My trip to Washington, D.C. also resulted in securing 25 million United States dollars to support school feeding through Catholic Relief Services because I went to the Department of Agriculture myself and pleaded with them. On the same trip to Washington, children will now benefit from the World Bank additional financing order IDD 20 funding circle to finance five rural bridges. We have um, a lot of areas where they use these very old ferries. We are going to get rid of those. And guess what? Now what about you the Indian Kingdom for the bridges? I trip to Glasgow on climate change attracted a potential investor to trade in carbon in Sierra Leone. Funnily, in October, the Nationalist published newspaper published on its front page with President Bill Travel again. The answer is yes. <laughs> as long as it will make Salon better. In fact, that tomorrow they travel. <laughs> Many other international travels for statutory meetings with other, where other heads of states are present, like ECOWAS, African Union, United Nations. I have to do. We are part of the world community, and the world is a global village, and we are meeting all the time to discuss pertinent issues relating to global challenges. I will never abdicate my obligations to attend these statutory meetings because you are gossiping. Away from the politics, 2021 has also been a very special year for our country. Sierra Leone qualified for the very first time for the African Nations Cup in 25 years. In 25 years, we are sleeping. From an electronic Print to social media, we celebrated with pride and joy. This achievement united our country and we went beyond politics. Surprisingly, even my brother, the NDC, Andrew Kyle, in his Ponder My Thoughts column published in June, uh, um, titled Sierra Leone's Success, President Bill found his keys again. He writes, President Bio is the lucky man. Coming from him, I'd like to invite him to come back to my party. <laughs> Just when we thought we could not win even a tomato stop, Mother Bio showed up again to take us to the African Nations Cup. That was his final. Conclusion, well, just maybe because the Lyon star success, maybe um, Andrew we definitely want to come back. And I'm extending this invitation to my brother, Andrew Kiley, to come back home. Home is always home. On governance, Trello recorded its third consecutive pass on the MCC scorecard after its first year of compact development passed the natural resource protection indicator for the first time and increased its gain in the area of ruling justly, moving from 81% to 83% in the fight against corruption. In fact, in 2021, scorecard showed that Sierra Leone scored the highest percentage on the control of corruption indicator than many other countries in Africa, including Nigeria, Ghana, Mali, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Cameroon, Guinea, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, etc. 
The fight against corruption is not just my fight. Therefore, tonight, I want to sincerely thank all of you, the Fourth Estate, for subjecting us to public, in, of, in public offices to more scrutiny and demanding more accountability and transparency in the governance of the state. This is a fight we must fight, and this is a fight we must win. In 2021, Sweden jumped 18 places up, upwards on the Global Economic Freedom Ranking 2021, moving from 168 in 2020 to 150 in 2021 as a result of robust reforms in the areas of health, education, and fiscal policy. The 2021 Press Freedom Index, published by reporters without borders, indicated that Sierra Leone moved 10 places upward because we fulfilled a manifesto commitment to repeal Part 5 of the Public Order Act of 1965. In November, on behalf of Sierra Leone, I signed the Global Pledge on Media Freedom as a commitment to improving media freedom domestically and working together internationally with the Media Freedom Coalition. Sierra Leone became the fifth country in Africa to commit to the principles and values of the Media Freedom Coalition. In 2021, we also enacted the Cyber Security and Crime Act 2021 to provide legal protection to people using the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, experience from around the world shows that an independent media encourages greater investment from home and overseas that gives investors access to accurate data and information. It also allows greater participation by the people in the political and economic debate, which can inform and influence policy making. Therefore, I am pleased to inform you that the proposed launch of the Media Investment Conference, which is at the advanced stage, is slated for January 2022. As we seek to address investment in media, we also deeply care about professionalism. With support from the BBC Media Action and other partners, the Independent Media Commission has completed the validation of the media code of practice which has, submit, which has been submitted to the Ministry of Information and Communication for the necessary action and enactment. Members of the Fourth State, in line with my commitment to human capital development, government through the Information Directorate of the Ministry of Information and Communication is in dialogue and in negotiation with partners and institutions to build capacity and empower media institutions and practitioners. This will be done through local and international scholastic training and the provision of necessary resources to promote the media sector. The Human Capital Development Program for the media will promote both vertical and horizontal growth in the sector. We also recognize that community radio stations play a critical role in bringing the, the communication gap in rural communities. They say, then country journalists are there. Welcome, welcome, hello. Any journalists come up to you? You want to hear the look at it? Am I true? The ministry has, the ministry, 91, not to offline down there. <laughs> the ministry has procured six radio suitcases and distributed two to, uh, rural, two to rural communities to expand the footprint of community radio stations, especially in remote parts of the country. I am pleased that tonight we have journalists, I've been told, from many uh, community radio stations here with us, and I thank you for your invaluable work in those communities. The Ministry has also facilitated the ongoing rehabilitation work at SLBC headquarters in Britain and the reconstruction of an administrative building in Coron. 
the Minister of Information and Communication will be doing the turning of the sword on Monday to mark the official commencement of the construction work. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as part of our media and civil society engagement strategy, I'm pleased to know that a few weeks ago, the Ministry of Information and Communication organized a successful three-day three -day media CSO retreat in war on the theme enhancing the media's contribution to good governance and democracy in Sierra Leone. I am told that the aim of the retreat was to review the key manifesto commitments in the new direction agenda in line with the Midterm National Development Plan 2019-2023 and highlight government's achievements and road map by 2023. I am hopeful that media practitioners and CSO now have an in-depth understanding and knowledge of government programs and activities in tandem with the manifesto commitment. This should enhance government's PR strategy to promote good governance, transparency, accountability, and robust visibility. I am reliably informed that it also serves as a platform for ministers and heads of government departments and agencies to attract, to interact with the media and the CSO. Our friends in the media, we are not only talk and do government, but most times we deliver more than we promise. Tonight, I'm pleased to inform you that the slight annual subvention has increased from 200 million leos in 2020 to 500 million for the financial year 2021. This is not to compromise the independence of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists, rather it is to enhance your capacity to hold the government accountable to the people of Sierra Leone. So I will end by leaving you with these few words by the author Dave Brack, and I quote, media does play a vital role in our democracy. And if we cannot depend on journalistic ethics, the nation is in trouble. End of quote. On that, with that quote, I wish you a wonderful festive season and a prosperous media. Thank you for this.